Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us this lovely day. We have a wonderful presenter with us, a local uh, farmer. Uh, she is the uh, herd master and co-owner of Red Coat Goats Farm, Sandra Oof. Thank you so much, Sandra, for being here with us this lovely afternoon. Thank you, Elizabeth. And uh, I'd just like to, first of all, thank you for all your hard work in bringing this together. I can see you've had your challenges, your technical challenges, and you've done stuff that I could never dream of doing in that beautiful presentation that you've done. So thank you. Thank you also to um, Marlene's Market for being such a great, efficient machine for, and a great platform for us to sell our milk in. Uh, the staff there are awesome, but they're super friendly. Everybody's really helpful. And uh, Big thanks to everybody there that stocks the shelves, do the accounts, you know, they're just a great, a great team. So I'm proud to be associated with Marlin's Market for sure. Uh, I'd also like to say a few other thanks. Um, I'd like to thank all our helpers on the farm, our helpers and our sponsors, because without them, we wouldn't be farming today. It's quite simply, uh, we couldn't have stretched ourselves, our resources to keep going. So we have a lot of people that come and volunteer, particularly at kidding time to help us. And we have some people that um, have assisted with major projects on the farm financially, which has been wonderful. So I'd yeah, just like to thank those people. And uh, last but not least, thank you to all our customers for supporting us. We're really thankful that you're buying our milk. We hope that you're enjoying it. And I'd like to introduce you to the goats. Soon as they're the girls that do all the hard work. So we've just um, we've just fed them. They come in for a feed twice a day. They come in at uh, they get fed at four o'clock in the morning, and they get fed again at about this time, three or three in the afternoon. And they get a top up of alfalfa. They don't get a lot of alfalfa. Uh, most of the food they get is from outside but today it's a super hot day and I think we're very glad to be just in the bar and relaxing and staying cool. It's one of those hot days that uh, are kind of on the danger danger zone for animals because they start mouth, mouth breathing. They, they, goats can't sweat so they, they mouth breathe to, to cool down and that's that's kind of tough on them. It can, can cause stress. So I've got three groups in this barn. This group you're looking at now these are my two-year-olds so they kidded for the first time this year and they're doing really well. Very pleased with their progress. And then on this side of the barn, we've got Bill, the mature milkers. I should just show you Yorkshire in the corner. She's our guardian animal. She has her own private little uh, sentry box there where she gets a nice bag of hay that she loves. So these are our mature girls. They've all got names, they've all got name badges. Well, wow. it's Juliet. There's Bonnie. There's Sibyletta. Say hello, Sibyletta. Yeah. There's little Lottie. That's the daughter of Juliet. She's just busy eating right now. She'll stay all the way later. Pamsy. Oh, Pamsy. Hey, Lottie. So Lottie was a tiny little runt when she was born. She really was minute and we didn't know whether she would make it, but she's made it real good. And she's milking superb. For the size of animals, she's all about the milk. She really does make a big contribution. There's Countess. So these, these guys are uh, mainly purebred La Manchas. Sienna and Angel. And Josie, no, Angel. So yeah, but you can tell you can tell by Mancha by the you know, very tiny ear. You know they have got ears, but they're just very small. So, but uh, they're, I think they're probably the most popular goats in this area. We did look at all different breeds, but it would appear that the La Manchas are what people have around here. So it, it made sense to go with the native. The native thing and we breed a little bit of um, Nigerian dwarf in there. So La Mancha milk is really tasty, it's a clean taste 
Uh, it's got a very good butter fat, and we mix it with a little bit of um, Nigerian dwarf milk, and that's even higher butter fat, which all makes for flavour, flavour and great mouthfeel. So we're very pleased with the taste of the milk. And we do work very hard to keep it absolutely pristine, spotless clean. So that's, uh, that's the, main, the main driver here. You know, you've got to have clean milk. So, yeah. Um, I'd take you outside, but it's scorching hot out there. And we're kind of uh, burnt off like the desert now. We have um, 13 acres. And we have some area that is wetland. It's, it's kind of wet and boggy. Um, the goats can go down there if they, when they want the green stuff. But they do still eat the brown stuff. You know, they're quite happy. So people often ask me, what do we feed the goats on, apart from the alfalfa? When they come in for milking, we give them um, whole field peas, which we sprout on farm, which are absolutely beautiful. They're a really super nutritious uh, food. And um, occasionally we'll feed some um, alfalfa pellets to, to top up the protein and some whole sprouted barley, which we also sprout on the farm. So uh, we, we, like, we like that mix. The, the mix comes up from uh, the, uh, well, we make the mix ourselves. To us, it's better than buying one of those blended grains. It's a lot more nutritious and we know what's gone in it because we put it all together. Yeah, um, I'll tell you about. Um, day starts at four o'clock, milk the goats. By the time I've got through milking, all the wash up associated with milking and then the bottling and all the wash up associated with bottling it's usually about 11 o'clock when i get on the road with my milk and as you know i'm delivering from uh near enough port between port angeles and squim on the olympic peninsula so i think you're um your microphone muted itself. Okay, yeah. We, there we go. I grab my phone when it drops and I think I've, yeah, pressed the wrong button. So, yeah. And I think I'm covering up half the camera. Yeah, it's tricky at working off a phone. But... Definitely, but what a great view of the barn and being able to, to, to meet the goats virtually. <laughs> Yeah, we we put this barn up ourselves. We had, you know, when we came, it was bare land here, so we've uh, we've started from complete scratch. We put put the dairy up, and we have another barn across the yard with the young stock in. I can certainly take you out and show you those guys. And maybe take a walk. So you'll notice as um there was a piece gone on the as part of the presentation that was about why why buy organic and it goes back to the, the reason why I started organic farming was because I didn't want pesticides and uh, drugs and fertilizer chemicals in my milk and pretty much what what a goat eat does go through into the milk so um, yeah there was I was reading a, an article which was um, commissioned by the dire director of science at the pro pro science programs at the organic center and it was published in the organic report and it said that the organic center tested conventional and organic milk from store shelves across nine regions of the u.s and found a majority of conventional milk samples tested positive for residues of antibiotics and controversial pesticides Two of the detected antibiotics have been entirely banned from US dairy production, while one sample contained levels of amoxicillin that exceeded the Food and Drug Administration's allowable limits. Pesticide residues of, pest of pesticides chloropyphorus, atrazine, permethrin, and more were found in 26 to 60% of conventional samples, but none of the organic samples. The results of this study indicate organic milk is clean and safe choice for those interested in avoiding synthetic ke chemicals in dairy products. It says that um, choosing organic um, at the grocery helps prevent the use of pesticides and, and synth synthetic fertilizers. 
US organic milk production avoids 165.5 million pounds of fertilizers and 3.8 million pounds of pesticides in a year. So uh, although you might think it's just a drop in the ocean when you put your organic pint in your trolley, um, it really does add up to all that. So yeah, I, I, I would recommend it. It's the cleanest, cleanest, safest milk out there. I think you all know the benefits of um, raw milk um, as being, uh, in particular goat's milk, being very, um, very easy to digest. Easy to digest, quick to digest. It has enzymes that help it to digest, which are killed in pasteurization. So, um, uh, and it's, it's also a more homogenized milk, which makes it easy to digest. The, the proteins are easy, easy to break down in the body. And um, yeah, it's just a very healthy milk that will feed any mammal. It's the only milk available that will feed any mammal. So I'm just gonna show you some younger goats down here. And they haven't been fed, so they're, they're shouting because they're a bit hungry. Hey, you guys. Dinner's coming down here. Noisy. And I've got another herd. So those are last year's babies. And then over here we've got the year before's. So we'll get bread this September, October. Shut the gate. Yeah, something that I've noticed with um, raw goat's milk is um, um, I have I have issues with dairy in general, but I have no issues with raw goat's milk. Oh, lovely! That's good to hear. Yeah, I I, I don't get funny and I don't I don't feel ill. <laughs> no. Good. Let me just show you these guys. There we go. Okay, so I've got a boar buckling there. It's going to start working this year. These guys are all trying to eat the trousers, so. So we have a we have a nice backdrop. I can't actually see the screen now. It's all gone black on me, but I'm hoping you, you guys can see the mountains. Can you see that, Elizabeth? Oh yeah, what a view. Yeah, so we have a dual view. We've got lovely mountains out that way. And then we have the Straits of Wanderfuka out that way. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Now the screen's are completely black. Can <laughs> I turn it back round again? Okay. Oh yeah, has anybody got any questions they want to ask? Unmute yourself or enter in the chat box. I am curious about um so um so you you have um you know goats and then um you um, breed them, so then they produce the milk, and and then um, and then those um, those other baby goats become breeding goats later. But um, how old do they have to be before they get to that point? We we don't breed them till the the two, so they'll they'll kid in the third year. Some people, some people breed them at one year, but we, we tried it one year and, and we didn't like the results. So we're sticking to waiting that little bit longer now. So um, I should tell you a little bit about, about the organic certification and the, the whole deal of being certified. Um, it's a very thorough, uh, massive process. 
it's very um they, they regulate absolutely everything that we do here everything that we feed the animals everything that's applied to the land or you know anything that we use on the goats they they have to approve absolutely everything so um, it is very very strict um, we're inspected and we're, we have the milk tested so it's I think it's good for people to know that it's so it's so tightly controlled because um, if it wasn't well we could be feeding the animals anything no it, exactly so and I think that's the difference between conventional and organic is that it's just it's just so regulated Um, Nicole, did you have a question? Um, I think, well, one, I just want to say hello because I just joined a little bit late. Um, and um, uh, I'm, just, I'm, <laughs> I'm just excited to learn. I just got um, my first goats in uh, April and I adopted them. And a week after they moved in, uh, my doe had her first kid. <laughs> And so I've been learning and I've been milking her and I've been just making farmer's cheese and I've tried making yogurt kind of unsuccessfully. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm just excited to learn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you'll get that. Um, trial and error with yogurt. Yogurt, um, it's not something that you can make out of raw milk. Uh, raw goat's milk doesn't seem to work. There's something that chemically doesn't work you have to do you do have to actually get your milk up to a certain temperature yeah so yeah the... and I think that's what I think I didn't I didn't get it to the right temperature yeah that either I didn't get it high off. enough or I didn't last it long enough to no okay <laughs> so you'll be making cheese and soap and everything next yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, and figuring out all the uses for whey. <laughs> if you've got yeah. any ideas there, um, I'm open uh, to that. Okay. It's good fertilizer. Oh, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know, apart from that, you can make cheese out of whey, but. You, you, you can use whey to um, do like, fermented vegetables or fruit you just cut oh, it all okay. up, you throw some of the whey in there and wow nice okay See, that's the great thing about learning is you learn one thing and then it opens all these other <laughs> doorways <laughs> to learn more things <laughs> i bought a lot of books on cheese making uh when i first got started before i was selling milk but we're too engrossed now with the bottling to be doing cheese making, so I've had to abandon the whole project. But I did, I would recommend some books written by uh, um, Gianicles Coldwell. Okay. She's written three books on cheese making. She has a farm in Oregon that I visited. She's, yeah, she's got some got very, some very, well, very well, well, well. She's got a book got for a big, book for big, one for a, a I'm getting a bit of an echo here. Elizabeth, I've lost all my pictures. Yeah. Um, how is your... Um, so the bottling room. Oh, there's the bottling room. How is your um, uh, battery doing on your phone? Uh, that's a good point, actually. I'll probably have to go back over to the barn and plug myself back in again. <laughs> <laughs> Not very good at applying this, obviously. Yeah, good point. Oh. We still see you. Oh, you still see me, right? If I run yeah. back there, I just to get, get it plugged back in. And then I must let these goats out. We only hold them in while well, they feed them and then they go out again. So I shall have to run and let them out. Yeah, so um you do you do deliveries all along the um peninsula, but then you also um uh, delivered to to Marlene's as well, and um, uh, y'all are thinking about doing some farmers markets too, right? Um, we, yeah, we've looked into it, uh, but the problem is with the farmers markets is I have to be there all day, and because I'm 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 a single person farmer really, I don't have any 
staff on as such. I've got a young lad that does a couple of hours twice twice a week in the mornings, but uh, pretty much I'm on my own. So to have time to feed all the animals, milk them, bottle the milk, deliver it, come back and start again with the feeding, I, you know, it's a tricky thing. <laughs> I'm trying to find room to put a, you know, to, to spend a day on a farm as much. I'd love to, I'd love to do it, but... Um, in, in practicality, I, I don't know how, how I'm going to do it unless somebody volunteers to do it for me. Definitely. Well, so hopefully love, there'll, be, there'll be someone that will be good to goat. Yes, I'd like to, I'd like to um, subscribe, but the problem is with the farmer's market is they want you there, obviously, every weekend, every, every Saturday, and I, I just can't commit to every Saturday. You know, we have so much going on here, especially at breeding time. I mean, we're just coming into breeding time now. Um, I don't really like to leave the farm because I need to watch what's going on. We hand breed the animals so, so that we know what's been bred and when it's been bred, so we know when it's going to kid. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, you, you kind of very very nice. chart it all out and yeah. prep for their arrival. And Oh, that's exciting. Days are, every day is pretty much 12 for 13 hours every day. You know, that is farming. So... I, I always think it's I, I like working for myself because I can I can choose when I have my time off but actually I don't get any <laughs> so, no possibility of going away or doing something so I've got to let these goats out so I'm going to just park the phone up somewhere I can put that down there I'm going to go and open some gates let the guys out I get to see them goat. <laughs> That's amazing. She does this all solo. I'm I'm so, a solo, but I'm like a tiny little. I have goats and chickens, <laughs> dog oh, and cat. That's, <laughs> That's great. No, and you know, like it's it's um it's it's so great because she was she was telling me that they um they had built all the barns themselves even um everything it was it was just barren land and um uh there'll be a there'll be a powerpoint um after this and um they they're actually all sustainable so it's all ran on solar oh that's so cool i missed that i was um i was telling nicole about um how how y'all um built barns and and how um, y'all started from scratch. Oh right, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we put some solar powers, solar panels on the roof of the dairy. We've got forty odd solar panels, which pays for most of our electric. So yeah, that's a good thing. Awesome. And we've got an, a good incentive on it from the government. That's all good. Yay! Mm -hmm. It always yeah. helps. <laughs> um. Uh, well, uh, uh, Sandra, do you, do you think we're ready for the? Uh, for the PowerPoint? Yeah, I think that would be great, Elizabeth. Okay. I'd be very thankful. You did a great job with that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna click here. From the beginning. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, Sandra was so kind to send me some, send me some info and um, also your website is just beautifully done. So I was able to get a lot of info from there. Right. So um, that's your um, husband, Stefan? Stephen, yeah, that's Stephen. Stephen, yeah. yes. Yeah, he works full time in the logging industry, but he also works part time on the farm. He doesn't get a day off. <laughs> <laughs> he, he doesn't get a day off either <laughs> we're in it together you know we're, we're, we're kind of partners although he's you know he's running a logging business so yeah so um y'all are from um northern england yeah yeah we grew up we grew up in the in the north but we spent a lot of our working life down in the south which we loved and then we met America and kind of liked it over here. We spent quite a bit of time over here. 
So that was uh, back in 2012. Yeah, we just like the, the laid back life over here. What happened here? <laughs> Hold on, just, oh, there we go. <laughs> and, um, and then y'all came um, to Washington um, from the UK in 2016. And that's when you um, um, uh, set uh, roots in um, the, uh, y'all are in the um, uh, Port Angeles area, right? Yeah, yes. It's, a, it's kind of the hub of the logging industry. So that was kind of the deciding factor really. It's beautiful out there. Mm. Yeah, it is. And um, so by 2020, y'all are licensed, organically certified, and ready to start selling milk in your third year. That's that's amazing. Well, it seemed like a long time before we were actually selling milk, but you know, building the dairy was a major thing, and coating the walls with all the special, you know, completely wipeable surfaces everywhere you know it's it's a fantastic job maybe it's a bit overkill but we, we did we did everything just how we thought it would needed to be and, exactly yeah. because that's that's why um you got in this industry because you wanted to provide a healthy high quality product yeah and it was uh y'all had um Difficulty finding raw organic raw organic goat's milk. Never ever seen it in a bottle before. Never ever have I ever found it. Not in the UK and not in America. You could buy raw milk or you could buy organic milk, but you couldn't buy raw organic milk. So and it's what I drink. So I thought, well, I'm going to do it for myself. Hopefully, some other people will like it too. And they do. And they the love special. it. <laughs> Um, very special product it really is yeah and um y'all's dairy um you know when you when you showed us earlier the bottling room it just looked so pristine and clean it's like you can oh, trust good. you can trust yeah. in that yeah it's, it's spotless um uh you were saying designed and that makes a difference i suppose when you purposely design something rather than just adapting some buildings that you happen to have so it was specifically done in a particular way to please the uh, WSDA food program. Um, so um, you had mentioned earlier that um, you had La, La Mancha and then the um, Nigerian um, dwarf. Yeah. yeah. And we have some, some we, we breed to boar quite a bit. And um, uh, those are raised for uh, for meat. Um, probably more, probably more towards the pet market, pets and 4-H. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we most of our animals go as pets. Yeah, obviously, I'm sure some do go as meat, but uh, we sell them online, and you know, you just have to pray that animals go to good homes and they're taken care of nicely. You know, we we do absolutely everything we can to make them happy and have a good life here so we you know there's no guarantees when you sell an animal that it's going to go to a good home but you you just hope so exactly happy happy goats oh. healthy farm <laughs> yeah you, you you get a better better milk i'm sure out of happy healthy goats than uh things that are caged up you know don't, don't get to range about these guys are free to range about 24 7 practically Apart from milking time, they get put in and in the afternoon they're in for maybe 20 minutes while feed them. So, um, with, with this picture, um, are these goats um, uh, getting, um, getting they're fed? All, they're all on the mother's milk. We have, uh, we have plenty of milk for them. They can have as much as they want. Um, we, we train them on a, on a bottle to start with and people start bottle feeding when they're first born for the first couple of days and then we get them onto a bucket with 10 teats round and they go in a pen with 10 other kids so they can yeah they've, got, they've always got buddies they're always together with buddies they're never on their own so it's kind of sweet to grow up together yeah when we when we sell them we sell them online we tend to sell siblings together 
That's so really a, amazing. We don't sell single. Yeah. It's not fair. And then, um, so, so each February, um, your goats um, start having kids and producing milk. And um, of course, is uh, available at locally Marlene's Market in Delhi. Yeah. Right. It, we sell it in Seattle, so it's, it goes into um, Central Co-op in Seattle, and we go down to Olympia Co-op with it as well. Oh, very cool. So um, for those of you that are watching that are in those areas, definitely check out their milk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll keep expanding just as, as and when I've got time to go and, uh, you know, spread my wings, I'll, I'll take it out further, but We've got, we're, we're just, um, we're busy on the farm and it's very hard to make time to go out and source new customers. So. Oh, definitely. But the customers that y'all have super appreciate you. Good, good. It's nice to hear. Oh, so um, could you explain why La Mancha goats? Are um, uh, I I know that uh, they um, they are like the the most prevalent in in this area. Um, I know that, but that, but that's what us around here. Like, some people, uh, there's some boars around here, and there's some Nigerian dwarfs, but very little of other breeds. You don't see any salmons around here, and I've never seen any chocolate. Ooh. Curiously, yeah, I've seen a hmm. lot of um, Nigerian um, dwarf uh, breeds more often, for sure. Yeah, the the sweet, the, the super fun of the Nigerian dwarfs, but the La Manchas to us are just unbelievably affectionate. That is the one characteristic of a La Mancha goat, is they just love to be cuddled. Oh. You can just cuddle it all day long, it, they love it. Yeah. You won't believe it when you see them in the pen smacking it, smacking each other. <laughs> <laughs> like going on a goat herd, it, it, people don't understand, the goats are very hierarchical, hierarchy uh, based, you know, that the herd is, the herd dimensions are who, who, who can fight the toughest, the meanest, is the boss. <laughs> yeah so someone has to um set dominance right <laughs> there's always a dominant character yeah and um the um excerpt from the um adding up the benefits of organic dairy that you had uh, uh mentioned earlier um that blew my mind um <laughs> Think about, about what you're putting in your in your trolley, doesn't it? In your in your shopping basket. Yeah, and um, when I was younger, uh, my parents would be like, "Oh, drink your milk," and I always just I didn't I didn't want to drink it, and they and then come to find out that I was lactose, and I was like, "Huh, no wonder." And yeah. I I was able to get a a bottle of some good good raw goat's milk from Marlene's and it made the world of a difference I actually it's like once you have one sip your body's like "Ooh, I want more of it I have a friend that's um battling with cancer and she has a lot of meds to take and and they really do uh, are very very severe on her stomach and she says she wouldn't be without that goat's milk she takes it with a with a medication it just helps to soothe soothe the stomach from all those um cancer meds so I thought that was an interesting thing that I didn't know about, you know, that it was soothing for, for people that are on a lot of meds. And uh, I also think it's a very good sports hydration drink, people don't realize. It's oh. a, great, a great hydration. It's got more energy and more nutrients in it than the horrible um, tartazine stuffed things that you buy on the shelf that are full of chemicals. Yeah. Definitely where they're like, oh, these electrolytes and it's yeah, like, Drinks I'm talking about here. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly blood things. So I'm not sure why you would um, use that for sports rehydration because, you know, to rebuild, re replace your energy and your protein, your muscle stuff, 
uh, the milk is a great is a great thing. We learned that when we were in the UK because people were shipping raw milk into London to sell it into the sports market, into the um, exercise, you know, the fitness the fitness end of things. So. Um, I uh, I had heard that uh, raw goat's milk is the closest comparable to breast milk. Yes, it's a uh, it, it, get, raw goat's milk can it can be fed to what goat's milk can be fed to any mammal. It's the only milk that can can nourish and raise an, uh, any mammal. Yeah. And that's beautiful. Which tells you really, you know, that, that it's really cool for everything and everybody. Yeah. So um, so y'all um built the built the barns, built it all from scratch, and then um, got those solar panels, which is really, really great. I mean, not only are, are, are y'all um, organically certified, but y'all are um, sustainable as well. And so for um, those of you listening, um, you know, this is a really great company to support. Yeah, we're, we're our customers. So that's a couple of our books in the picture. Oh yeah! Take you out to show you some of the boys. Well, you, should, you saw one over there. That was the uh, the little. Um, you saw the little boar goat. He's one of our books. Just turn. Oh, hey, buddy! You're very yeah, happy. weird. He's in rut now. Thanks. There's his mate. Oh, yeah, there's a little Manchester buckling over there. Hey, Ranger! Come on, come on, Ranger! He's only a little guy. He was born in February this year. No. Yeah, so we have choices. We can breed to Mancho, we can breed to uh, Nigerian dwarf, or we can breed to boar. It's nice to have choices. <laughs> All right, boys, that's just quite close. Thank you very much. <laughs> they are adorable. And I, um, I bet it's just like the cutest thing putting these these baby goats and and sweaters <laughs> well because it, it, the kid in winter you know the kid in february it's, it's pretty cold so yeah we do have them in blankets for um you know whenever we see anything that's that looks like it needs a little bit of help through the night we'll put them in blankets we can you know we, we have a blanket it up nigerian dwarfs are fairly uh, robust but um the la manchas certainly need a little bit of help we start them off in little boxes where they just, you know, get the bearings and then we put them into a pen with a ten, 10 kids in and raise them like that. We hand raise them so they're all super friendly because they've been hand raised. That way they have that social interaction with not only Very you, much but so. also um, their, their um, uh, pen group. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> That's Yorkshire. She's not, she's not quite sure what to make of the telephone. <laughs> Aww. Does she um, uh, look out for everybody and just kind of hangs out? Yeah, she does. Yeah, she stays with the goats all the time. Oh. Yeah, she's a very good, good. And she's really uh, low maintenance. You know, we just don't do much apart from put a hay bag out for her. So. Yeah, the goats are hanging out in the barn because it's cool in here. It's, it's hot out there. I don't know what it's like down in Tacoma, but uh, it's a scorcher here. Yeah, from uh, what I can see outside, it, it looks pretty hot out, maybe in the 80s. 
yeah, 80s and 90s, I would say. I'm looking that gate for them. Right, girls. Come. Just about that one. <laughs> so so Sandra yeah, um yeah. the the goat on the baby goat on the left that is a Nigerian um dwarf right that's a dwarf, yeah. It's two dwarfs. Okay. Dwarfs have got the ears, got full ears. And that's a, uh, I'm going to say that's a, that's a crossbred. Okay. Not a, that's a pure La Mancha over there. That's a pure La Mancha. Fight <laughs> going on. Yeah, it's absolutely blistering hot here. <laughs> I think the goats are going to venture out anytime soon. It'll be yeah. getting cooler here soon, I'm sure. Um, so, so y'all uh, rotate the goats kind of like in like different areas throughout the year too, right? Um, no, they have full access to the whole the whole thirteen acres, the whole time, yeah. because a lot. We, we don't have, um, we only have probably about five acres of grazing. So most of it is, um, oh, I don't know what you call it. It's, it's forestry. There's, there's trees and there's shrubs and all, all different kind of outside, you know, foliage things. Yeah, it's a scrub, most most of scrub. Hmm. Well, that's the bar. And that's the dairy. And, uh, you had mentioned that you have um, uh, volunteers that um, that help out on the farm, but you have some that um, are um, weekly, right? Uh, no, I have a, I, I, yeah. Well, actually, they are. Yes, I have a couple of. A couple of ladies that come in a couple of mornings, um, which is wonderful. And I have a young man that I've employed to come and help me. And he's learning to milk and he'll learn to bottle and hopefully he'll start delivering as well. Oh, fabulous. That'll be so great. I mean, he, was, he was really great at kidding time. He's called Scott. So we've got Scott and we've got Karen and we've got Nadine and Janine and Anne helping us. I've got a lady that helps deliver. She does do Tacoma actually in Federal Way. She's been oh. away. She's back soon. So. Very cool. That's really helpful. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I mean, I me up. Imagine, you know, there's, there's so much that, that goes into running, running the farm. Yeah. yeah. So to, to have those volunteers be able to um, help you out so then you can um, extend your time elsewhere that 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 is needed. Oh, um, Sandra, I think you're uh, you're muted again. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. Wipe the dust off the phone. Can't see it very well. Oh, that's better. Now I can see. Yeah. The um the uh. Mountains that are in the background, um, that are that are on the farm. That's the um, that's the Cascades, right? Or the Olympics uh, mountains? Yeah, hurricane beyond. Yeah, that would that would be on the other side. <laughs> hey, Daphne. Yeah, these. Oh, there they are, getting some more, getting some more grub. 
Kan jag gå om Fem minuter och gå om. Get up, that's my food. <laughs> I I actually never knew that um, the uh, goats with the beards were males. No, we've got girls with beards. Yeah, no, no, it just beards, beards just don't doesn't just belong to males. So I've got some good. girls with some really great beards. Oh, really fabulous. I would, I would be silly and probably want to braid it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we dehorn them, but we don't take the beards off. Oh, good, <laughs> yes. Yeah, horns wouldn't work for us around here. They would just get stuck in the headlocks and stuck in everything. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm sure um, removing the horns is probably like a whole process in itself, too. We do it when they're, when they're just kids, when they're about, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks old. Oh, oh, very cool. Yeah, so they're probably like um, e easier um, when they're when they're younger. Yeah, they've forgotten about it within minutes. So yeah, we give them a bottle, milk bottle straight afterwards. Oh, I forgot. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I think this picture is so cute. They're all just hanging out on a. Um, Actually, fall not real. Yeah, one of the. There was a little house in there and they played in that house forever, but eventually they destroyed it. <laughs> it seems not to rebuild the house yet. So we've just got the real there now. <laughs> but it works great because they can they can climb up and have fun and they can all lay out and <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing, goats are herd animals, so you never want goats on their own. Goats are always gonna have a buddy. Yeah, the the buddy system is the only way to goat. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Yeah, so we, we don't sell them in singles. You know, somebody comes to buy a kid, we say, well, no, we can't sell, we can't sell, you, sell you one, but we'll sell you two. <laughs> Works out oh. when you've got 20 kids to get rid of. Oh, yeah, definitely. You could pair them <laughs> off that way. And, and then... Yeah, that was uh, my... Is it... Is it true that goats do like to get on top of things? Yes, they do. They love to climb. Yeah. Yeah, we usually leave something out in the field. We've got rocks out in our fields for them to climb on. Oh, yeah, just kind of like in this picture. Yeah, you see the rocks. Yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah. We were quite lucky we had, got, we had a property that had a bunch of rocks on it. <laughs> You're like, this is perfect. Yeah, yeah, because the goats can't destroy them. <laughs> We'll destroy everything else, but we can't destroy a rock. Yeah, I've heard of um, folks that um, uh, have to kind of um, make sure that their fences are really secure if they're planning on having a garden. Yeah, yeah, we we do get goats getting out, but they just get into our our place, you know, where we and we do lose our plants frequently, which is very frustrating. But um, we have electric fencing and they don't ever mess with that. Once they've learned that it's electric. Yeah. 